Today my guest is Lisa Turkhurst. Keep your weapon at your side. Am I trying to prove that I'm right or am I trying to improve this relationship? Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today my guest is Lisa Turkhurst. Welcome. Thank you. It's a joy to be with you. Thank you. Now Lisa is the president of Proverbs 31 Ministries. She's the author of 15 books including New York Times bestseller, Made to Crave. She has told her remarkable life story on national television and radio including Oprah and Good Morning America. She lives in North Carolina with her husband and her five children. And she will even talk to us here on Heritage of Truth after Oprah. So (laughs) thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. So your new book is called Unglued. Yes. Why don't you tell me about that title? (laughs) Well, Unglued is um, kind of examining emotions, but not the broad spectrum of of emotions. Really, it's that moment of decision when someone has hurt our feelings or come against us or um, disappointed us or criticized us. It's that moment of how are we going to react in that Mm -hmm. moment. And so in Unglued, we examine two different kinds of exploders, two different kinds of stuffers, and Mm -hmm. how to spiritually and emotionally navigate those realities. Okay. Well, what makes a person an exploder or a stuffer, do you think? Is that a personality difference or what? Well, I think, you know, it's kind of interesting. I'm a combination of both an exploder and a stuffer. So Mm -hmm. I can be all four of these reaction types. It depends on who I'm interacting with. So I would react differently to you Mm -hmm. than I would to my husband. I would react differently to my children than I would to my publisher. Right. So we we are very good at instinctively measuring how safe a relationship is, um, how much we're willing to invest in that relationship, and um, and, and we're really good at sort of navigating what kind of reaction we're going to have. Um, you know, all conflict, and really that's sort of the catalyst to a reaction. Mm-hmm. All conflict happens when one of two things happens. One is that we feel exposed in some way. Mm, So our vulnerabilities, our insecurities, our inadequacies, someone threatens to expose that Mm -hmm. conflict. Or either exposed or we feel opposed because we want what we want, when we want it, how we want it. And when someone threatens to prevent that from happening, then conflict happens. And so... I think that's in the book of James, basically, isn't it? Basically, it it is. So, you know, and and what I'd love to do is take biblical truth, Mm -hmm. uncompromised biblical truth, absolute truth, but unpack it in such a way that it will interrupt us in that moment of decision because that's where real growth can happen. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I remember in your book, there was something you told your daughter. I'm trying to remember the exact... Oh, yes. I know exactly. Know yeah. Okay. So one time um, I was driving my daughter to school and I instructed her when she got out of the car. She was running late, so she was eating toast in the car. And I instructed her, when you get out of the car, take the plate, the paper plate that's full of crumbs. I don't want it left in my car. So take it and throw it away in the trash can in the front of the school. I don't want to do that. I mean, that's embarrassing, Mom. I don't want to take a paper plate up to the front of the school and throw it away. And I said, Brooke, you need to take the paper plate and throw it away. And she's like, well, I'm not happy about this. And I said, well, honey, I'm not asking you to be happy about it. I'm just asking you to do it. You know? Mm-hmm. And she said, well, if I don't feel happy, then I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> and I said, Brooke, your feelings mm-hmm. are indicators not dictators. Your feelings can indicate what you're facing in this moment with this circumstance, but they don't have to dictate how you react to it. So of course she gets out, she's not happy, 
She throws the paper plate away, you know, goes on throughout her day. But as I drove away from that carpool line, I thought, that's what the Lord's been trying to tell me. Lisa, mm-hmm. your feelings are indicators, not dictators. You are the boss of your feelings, not the other way around. Your that's feelings right. cannot boss you around unless you let them. That's true. One of the things I really like about your writing style is that you are very vulnerable. You are not afraid to tell people about what you've done that is very embarrassing. <laughs> and, Thank you. <laughs> and and you're funny. Oh. There's a lot of humor in your writing. Like I told you the other day, one of my favorite things in your book was when you talk about your daughter who laid her across the, herself across the threshold and said that it was an, an act of child abuse to send her to school. Uh-huh. It so. is. To make her get up in the morning and get dressed and go to school. And she, yeah. as we're walking out the door and I'm pushing her like, you know, go to school, go to school. Come on. We're going to be late. We're going to be late. We're going to be late. And so she lays across the front door stoop and said, this is child abuse. No <laughs> child should be made to get up early in the morning and go to school. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, that is yeah. a very true to- true story. <laughs> yeah, and then the towel incidents. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, when the kids used the towels and they weren't mm-hmm. <laughs> there for you or your husband. That's when- right. And then I tried to be the hero in that story. So my husband's in the shower and says, I need a towel. So I, I look around the bathroom. There's no towels. Now, why are there no towels? Because all of my kids love to use my bathroom. So they have obviously used towels and taken the towels elsewhere. So my husband standing there dripping wet, feeling a little cold and maybe slightly frustrated, you know, can't a man get a towel in his own home? Simple request. So I was like, I will go find the towels. So I go marching upstairs. Who took the towels out of my bathroom? I go and look in every single one of my girls' rooms, no towels. Go look in my boys' rooms, no towels. You see what had actually happened is that I had forgotten I'd put the towels in the washing machine and then my son had taken them and put them in the dryer Oh. And after the buzzer rang, he folded them up and stuck them under his bathroom sink, oh. which is where towels go, but not my towels for my bathroom. I never thought to look there. So I looked all over the house. It was like a thief had gotten in and stolen my towels. <laughs> and so, you know, that feeling of, man, I really stink as a house cleaner because yeah. like, I can't even keep up with my towels in my bathroom. My husband's yeah. standing there dripping wet, freezing at this point, needing a towel. And so I go and get a pool towel and it has Barbie on it. <laughs> which I think is perfectly fine. And I go and I fling it over the door in the shower. Here's a towel, finally. And he said, oh, it's the Barbie towel. That's the towel that the dogs lay on. And I said back to him, do you think I would honestly go get a towel that the dogs have been laying on? That is a clean towel. It is a towel that I pulled out of the cabinet where we keep our pool towels. No, it's the towel that the dogs lay on. So in that moment, we're not having a discussion really about towels. Mm -hmm. What's really happening in my brain is he thinks I'm a terrible house cleaner. Like if I was a good wife, I would have the folded towels right here beside the shower. But because I'm not good, I'm Mm -hmm. so busy, I'm distracted, I'm not running an efficient home. I really stink. Like he really probably is standing there wishing he would have married someone else. Now, to him, what is he thinking about? The towel. A towel. <laughs> Plain and simple. Suddenly, to me, this is a statement of all of my inadequacies. Remember? Suddenly, mm-hmm. I'm exposed. Right. In that moment. And because I feel exposed, then conflict happens. Mm-hmm. And I can't say throughout the pages of Unglued, which you've kind of already said, you know, I can't say I'm the hero of this book. I'm just not. Mm -hmm. because I don't want people reading the book and seeing how I do it right. I want to let people in to how I do it wrong and show them the grace that's there and Mm -hmm. spiritual and emotional strategies that can help me improve, that have helped me make what I call in the book imperfect progress. I thought that was one of the best points of the book. Yeah, so that they can make some imperfect progress. Mm -hmm. Because let's be honest, when we're dealing with emotions and conflict, It's all a bit slippery and unpredictable, right? Right. You can wake up happy this morning, and then someone bumps into that happy. And even though you were great 10 minutes ago, you are definitely not great now. Right. And so it's so unpredictable, and it Mm -hmm. happens in an instant. And so the point of Unglued is let's make some imperfect progress. Let's Mm -hmm. understand if we're an exploder, what we can bring into that moment of decision of how we're going to react, 
Mm -hmm. You know, the exploder needs to bring a pause, and I explain that in the book, Mm -hmm. how to do that spiritually and emotionally. The other kind of exploder, they need to bring perspective. If this is the worst thing that happens to me today, it's still a pretty good day. Right. And then the stuffer needs to let go of some things in that moment of conflict. The stuffer that builds barriers, they need to let go of pretending. Mm, yes. You know something's wrong, but you ask a stuffer what's wrong, and they say, oh, nothing, I'm fine. fine. <laughs> and they're not fine. Mm-hmm. Isn't it interesting how the verse, a gentle answer turns away much wrath? Mm-hmm. Most people would say that would apply to the exploder. But if you think about it, it applies to both. Because the, the exploder needs to give a gentle answer. The stuffer needs to give an answer. <laughs> you know what I'm exactly, saying? Exactly. Yeah. They need to be honest. So they, mm-hmm. it, so the stuffer needs to read the verse, a gentle answer, answer, tell me what's wrong with you. You know? Exactly. And all throughout the Bible, we see this, you know, we see this, this both. It's, it's the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart. Like Psalm 1914 says, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight. So it's the emotions that we express and suppress. They both need to be honoring to the Lord. Absolutely. And then when when we learn to make that imperfect progress, we can be better witnesses. We, I mean, here we're trying to be examples for our children through the way we live in in our Christian life. And if we're constantly exploding or suppressing, and then a lot of times suppressors will explode later. And that's the fourth stuffer. Uh, the, the, there's two exploders, two stuffers. So right. the fourth reaction is that stuffer. Mm-hmm. You have a stuffer that builds barriers, and then you have the stuffer that collects retaliation rocks. That's right. And that's the stuffer that, oh, in the moment, I'm going to be peaceful, peaceful, peaceful. But inside, I'm not peaceful. I'm collecting proof of how bad you are and how good I am. And one day, I'm going to be pushed a little too far, and I'm not going to be a stuffer anymore. And I'm going to unload on you all the proof of how wrong you have been all this mm-hmm. time. And we need to learn to give each other grace, don't That's we? Right. We really do. We need it, and so does everyone around us, especially our loved ones. I agree. Because I, I, like you said, we put our card down with our loved ones. They're the ones we hurt the most, mm-hmm. which doesn't make sense. But That's right. So yeah. in that moment... I, and I'm that kind of reactor with my husband, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I'm the stuffer that collects retaliation rocks because mm-hmm. I'm going to keep the peace. 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 And all of a sudden, I'm not going to keep the peace anymore. <laughs> and so I have to ask myself before I unload all of my proof of mm-hmm. how right I am, I have to ask myself, am I trying to prove that I'm right or am I trying to improve this relationship? Good question. Because I can't do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. I want you to repeat that. That is so important. Am I trying to prove that I'm right? Or am I trying to improve this relationship? Because I cannot do both at the same time. Yeah, that is really, really good. Well, why don't you tell us, do you have anything else um, in the works? Anything else that you're working on? Well, Um, along with Unglued, the book, the paperback mm -hmm. book, which you can get anywhere books are sold, Mm -hmm. um, we have a six-week DVD curriculum that goes along with it, and um, then also a participant's guide, which is a workbook. It's perfect for personal study or Sunday school classes. You can complete the whole lesson in one hour, or in the workbook, there's a two-hour version. So if you Mm -hmm. have a longer, small group, maybe it meets for two hours, you can do it that way. Um, But you can get the whole set for less than $50. So that's a really good investment, I think. It's it's probably less than than a counseling session, you know? (laughs) Um, But it's it's great. It's really good for for girlfriends to go together. It's really good for women involved in women's ministry to Mm -hmm. all go together. It's really good for marriages because in each of these different pockets of relationship, you're going to have conflict. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, honestly, it's not the absence of conflict that makes for a good relationship. It's properly handling the conflict that arises that determines a good relationship. Definitely. And so don't be, I think sometimes, you know, we shy away from conflict. I don't want to deal with conflict. But in reality, sometimes it's that conflict that can open up the door to true intimacy 
-hmm. if we handle it properly. If we right. don't handle it properly, it can be absolutely devastating. Yeah. But if, it can ruin a relationship. It can. That's why I often say God gave us emotions to enhance our life so that we can enjoy our life, not destroy our life. That's true. And where can people find you online? Well, two different places. You can go to lisaturkhurst.com. And can you spell Turkhurst? Yes. <laughs> Here's the best thing. If you Google L-Y-S-A and then put a T, I'll come up in Google. So lisaturkhurst.com. Okay. Okay. Or you can go to the book's website, and it's ungluedbook. Dot com. Okay. And from there, you can link over to my blog. You can purchase the book. You can take the online assessment to tell what kind of reactor you are primarily. And, um, yeah, lots of fun stuff there. Okay. And then also, tell us a little bit about what Proverbs 31 Ministry does and um, if anything's coming up with that. Yeah. So Proverbs 31 Ministries is um, a, an organization that I helped start 18 years ago mm -hmm. and uh, we have books that we've published um, we do speaking engagements but um, women mainly connect with us through our radio program it's on over 1200 christian stations now every day it's just like a little one minute clip of inspiration um, and then also our daily devotions called encouragement for today and we have okay. about 700,000 women that subscribe to our daily devotions and that's, that's really exciting I'm very passionate about getting women into God's Word and letting God's Word get into them so that their that's life good. can change so yeah okay well thank you so much for being our guest oh thank Just you wonderful. thank you thank you and I hope your book does great thank you